Hello and welcome to LCI. We are so glad you could join us as we celebrate National Disability Employment Awareness Month. I'm your host, Valonda Calloway, coming to you from LCI's Durham, North Carolina headquarters. A bit of housekeeping. We are recording this program and we will upload it to Facebook as well as to YouTube with closed captioning after this broadcast is over. Also, we have removed our masks because each guest I talk with will be at least six feet away from me. LCI is one of the largest employers of people who are blind in the United States. It will blow your mind to see the talent that is in this company. And we will show you some of that over the next half hour. Jeffrey Halting is the president of LCI and the lead champion of the reason LCI was founded, which was to address the high unemployment rate of people who are blind or low vision. Jeff, so nice to talk with you. Thank you, Thank you the Lord. It's great to be here. Yes, so celebrations like this are important because a big chunk of the population has no concept of what it's like to work with someone who is blind or low vision, isn't it? That is true. Many, many Americans, Americans out there have no experience of that. And that's, and that's why, why this month is important, because it brings, it brings awareness, awareness to a whole section of the population that is underserved and underemployed. About 70% of people who are blind are unemployed. And so the work that we do, I think, really helps other employers um, focus on the capabilities that are out there. You know, when I think about um, people who are blind, they really, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions out there about should I hire someone that is, has a disability? And of course, um, what happens is that they focus on the ability piece and they're, and they're thinking, this person's not capable or they're not reliable or they don't have the right mindset or whatever. Nothing could be further from the truth. Our employees who are blind or low vision here at LCI exhibit incredible capabilities and talent, just like everyone else. And you don't like that word disability. I do not. Let's talk about it. Right, so, so Volanda, if I threw out three words to you, disappointment, uh, disillusion, disarray, mm -hmm. do any of them have a positive ring to them? No. None of them. They all, sorry, it's, uh, they well, all have, floor. that's right, they all have a very <laughs> negative connotation. And it's the same with disability. People immediately think of it that someone is not as capable as somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, let's get rid of that word. Or just take away the dis and right. focus on ability. Yes. Focus on ability. Each one of us is differently abled. Mm -hmm. We all have our own skills. We also have things that, that sometimes pull us down. Doesn't matter where, that's what the beauty of mankind is. So let's right. focus on the ability and there's so many people out there that want to work and need to work and should work. One thing I've noticed being here at LCI is the senses of the people who are blind and low vision, their other senses are so heightened. That is true. That is true. I'm, I am I'm not blind or low vision, but I have seen it, noticed it in my 14 years here mm -hmm. that so many of our employees who are blind have incredible skills in other areas that, that get heightened, mm -hmm. some of the other senses. That's very true. Yes. yes. So technology is one of the reasons that employees here are able to do so much. LCI is at the forefront of making sure your employees have what they need to get the job done. Yeah, that's true. I think every time, one of the things about LCI, uh, Valanda, is we're so diverse, mm -hmm. right? We do so many different things. And we do that because it's our mission which drives us. And so the technology piece is critical. We cannot adapt uh, a, a job or a role to someone who is blind or low vision unless we make the right accommodations. Mm -hmm. And many of those are around the area of technology, mm -hmm. whether it's software, whether it's machinery, um, all sorts of, ma mainly around software, mm -hmm. making sure that our computer systems are accessible so that someone who is blind can do the job that they need to do. Many of the products that are manufactured here at LCI are available to the public on LCI's website, yes. aren't they? Yes, we have a public-facing website, buylci.com. That's B-U-Y-L-C-I.com. And we make over 2,500 products, and we have many, many other manufacturers' products on there available for sale. That's right. If someone is watching or listening to this live stream and they're interested in employment at LCI, there are many opportunities available, aren't there? We're always hiring, always. We, I mean, it's just part of our DNA. 
So if people go to lcindustries.com and hit the careers tab or the careers page, they will find all of our open job postings and we are always hiring. Absolutely. And LCI is also into philanthropy. You have a great connection with the Duke University Eye Center. We do. Um, LCI and Duke have been great partners for many, many years now. So back when uh, Duke wanted to renovate and build a new eye center uh, back in 2015 when it opened, we were one of the um, founding um, donors to that program. So many of our employees here in, uh, at LCI uh, get benefit from the Duke Eye Center. They're an amazing institution, have been in the top 10 eye centers in the United States for many, many years. A wonderful organization. What's next for LCI? Oh, well, we're 80, I always say we are 84 years young. <laughs> so the next 84 years, you know, my hope is at some point they will cure blindness. Mm -hmm. And so we will put ourselves out of work. But there are so many people, more and more people who are aging into blindness. And I think that LCI is an amazing opportunity for people who want an upward mobility opportunity, whether it's in uh, accessibility consulting, uh, disability consulting, in working in manufacturing, in distribution, in retail. We, the sky is the limit. We can do it. Please come and check us out. Thanks so much, Jeffrey. Thank you, Valanda. I'll have a whole lot more with Jeffrey in just a few minutes, but right now I want to show you around this warehouse. I went on a tour and got a chance to see up close a lot of the products that are made and the people who manufacture them. LCI has been around since 1936. This RTP company does some amazing things, but you may have never heard of it. That's why I'm here, to help you get to know LCI and to find out about the mission. I'm here with the Vice President of Business Development, Dwayne Gilbertson. And Dwayne, you all do some incredible things and you have an incredible mission too. Yes, our, our mission is we are in the business of creating meaningful employment for people who are blind. We do this through several different ways, uh, one of which is manufacturing, which you are in today. We currently operate eight manufacturing facilities around the country. This particular one in Durham is headquartered. It's a 245,000 square foot facility. Um, in total, we manufacture over 2,500 different SKUs. We have 50 locations where we sell retail, and we have two distribution facilities one here in Durham off of Miami Boulevard and one in Las Vegas, uh, Nevada. Dwayne, this is the press shop and it's a pretty important part of what LCI does, isn't it? Yes, this, this, in this press shop, uh, we've been manufacturing file folders for the federal government since the early 1970s. Uh, in this particular room, on a, on a day where with very good orders, we will produce or convert up to 11 tons of paper into file folders. Dwayne, you've got some long-term employees here at LCI, including Stanley. Yeah, Stanley Bullock. Stanley Bullock was our employee of the year a couple years ago. He's been with us for 34 years. He's uh, worked in our press room. Stanley is completely blind, and his responsibility is to take a roll of paper, feed it into a high-speed press, and cut out blanks, which are then turned into either file folders or double pocket portfolios, which are consumed by the federal government. Dwayne LCI is famous for making mattresses. That's right. <laughs> and that's, that's right. what we're seeing behind that's us, right? right? We have been making mattresses since the 1940s. It was actually one of the first products that we made. It actually was the first product that we made for the federal government in support of World War II. Um, today, we still make mattresses. We make the Navy shipboard mattress. We make tons of mattresses for barracks around the country. Uh, mattresses uh, that are made here are made no different here than in any other manufacturer in the country. But what, what James is doing is he's spraying glue down because he's, he's then gonna put magnets in where he glues it. So what is the, I guess, the benefit of a magnetic so, there are a lot of people that believe that magnets have therapeutic benefits. LCI makes a really cool product called Flow Logic, and it's designed to help us consumers conserve energy, right? Yes. So Flow Logic is a contract that we do for a local company named Flow Logic. It was invented here locally in North Carolina. Um, 
and it is essentially a circuit breaker for the water system in your house. It monitors the water flow into the property, and then if there is a leak, it detects that leak and it shuts it down so that it does not create damage. Ken's been working with us for about 14 years. There's something for everybody. It, nobody has the same skill set. You know, nobody has the same mechanics about them. It's just a matter of fitting the people in the right place where they fit in the best. And I think LCI does a pretty good job of doing that. Impressive, isn't it? Employees like the ones you just saw have been proving for decades that they are capable of doing the work. That's why the base supply centers have been so successful. October marks the 25th anniversary of the BSCs. Jeffrey is back to talk more about them. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you, Valanda. <laughs> so LCI was there in the very beginning of the base supply center program. You're absolutely right. Um, back in the mid-90s, um, the government was changing the way they do business and the stores that they operated started to close down and that really impacted our sales. So Bill Hudson, our former CEO, went to Fort Bragg, pitched them a proposal to say, hey, let us open a store, give us a space, we'll put the inventory and the people into the store and let's test it. Did a six month pilot, the rest is history. There are now over 155 base supply centers in the program. LCI operates almost 50 of them and they've been wildly successful supporting the nation's military. And LCI works closely with the federal government through the Ability One program, right? Correct. Yes, all of these base supply centers are part of the Ability One program. And Ability One is the official government program which is out there to find meaningful employment for people who are blind or who have other significant disabilities. Mm -hmm. So it's a great program. It employs over 45,000 Americans across the country and the base supply center program is a big part of it. And a lot of the products that are made here at LCI are sold in those base supply centers. You are correct. We sell all of the products we make, all of the products the other not-for-profits in the program make, and many other commercial items as well. So there's a very special employee who works at a base supply center. Tell us about George Mason. Right. So every year, National Industries for the Blind recognizes employees of the year at each of the participating companies like us. Mm -hmm. So George Mason from Fort Bragg Base Supply Center was nominated and he is our LCI Employee of the Year which recognizes upward mobility in one of our employees who is blind. George has worked with us for 11 years, does an amazing job, responsible for many things down in that store at Fort Bragg. We're very proud of the work he's done. That is incredible. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Thank you, Valanda. I visited the base supply center at Fort Bragg to see for myself how LCI employees keep our service men and women ready to go. I'm at the LCI store on Fort Bragg where they sell everything from hand sanitizer to everything you need for a printer. But the selection isn't what makes this place truly special. Instead, it's the employees who prove every day that having a disability doesn't make them less able, it's actually their superpower. I have been with LCI almost 10 years now. I love the fact that blind people such as myself, I mean, we, you know, we are involved in all sorts of functions around the store from stocking shelves to running cash registers to warehousing, shipping, receiving. Uh, we pretty much do it all. Yes, they do it all no matter how differently able they are. I do uh, binders and stuff like that, you know. Uh, put, putting out freight, anything that needs to be done. At the LCI base stores, you'll find a mix of employees getting it done. Some of them have learning disabilities, some are sighted, and some are blind or visually impaired. The manager at the Fort Bragg store says her employees with disabilities are very capable with no limits on what they can do. Vicki Hardy is blind and uses a new scanning tool to handle duties that, in the past, only sighted people could do. You just scan the product, it tells you the price. You can make item labels or shelf tags also on it. And then you can do the item audit, you can do cycle count, you can do, it'll tell you inventory level. Yeah. 
it's really nice. Technology also helps George manage products in the store. The software that's running on the uh, camera is called CyberEyes. It's a technology that, well, it, it'll do a number of things. What I use it for primarily is to magnify item labels and shelf tags, things like that, so that I can actually read them. I can take a photo of the, of the shelf tag or the or the UPC code and it'll read it back to me. If I'm connected to Wi-Fi, I can take a photo of what I'm looking at and it'll go out to Google and tell me exactly what it is I'm looking at. It can be difficult for people who are blind to find a job. According to the American Foundation for the Blind, just 44% of people who are blind or visually impaired are employed. Some employers don't yet understand what they're missing out on. Employees like JP, who is always eager to get the job done. It's exciting to, uh, to come to work every day. Yeah, because I, I never know what's going to happen from one minute to the next. Working also gives these employees a sense of self-worth. I was out of work for quite a bit of time, and uh, at the time, you know, when I when I finally came into contact with LC, I mean, I, I felt useless, worthless. I mean, I just didn't really see any future for myself. When I started working here, Working here, it helped me to regain my self-respect, my sense of self-worth, you know. I, it, it helped boost my confidence and, and helped me to remember that if somebody tells you no, you do it anyway, you yeah. <laughs> Fort Bragg BSC. LCI isn't just in the manufacturing business. Digital accessibility is also super important. What used to be known as LCI Tech is now known as Abler. John Samuel is the co-founder and CEO. John, it's so great to talk with you. Thanks, Yolanda. I'm very glad to be here. Yeah, let's talk about the origin story of Abler. How did it come about? Yeah, so it goes back to LCI Tech. So uh, three years ago, I was uh, out of a job and I had been working in private equity and thought my site just started to deteriorate really fast and I didn't know if there's any hope for me left. And then I was introduced to Jeffrey and LCI and when I met with Jeffrey, he talked about creating new knowledge-based jobs. Mm -hmm. And I came on board and was tasked with creating knowledge-based jobs for people who are blind and low vision. Mm -hmm. And that's what was the origin of LCI Tech. And then just um, <clears throat> 18 months ago, I was at a uh, conference, at a tech conference, and I heard the CEO of Walk West talking about diversity and inclusion in the tech space. And it was the first time that I heard about diversity and inclusion in the tech, con in the tech uh, you know, kind of context. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about it from a business case. And uh, he offered to meet anyone for coffee. I jumped at it and met with him. And uh, you know, he had never thought about people with disabilities in the diversity and inclusion discussion yeah. or in tech. And uh, one thing died to another. And 18 months later, I was introduced to Mike Ionelli, my co-founder. And uh, we started Abler. So now Abler is what used to be LCI Tech. What's new? What's different? Yeah, I think, you know, when we came together with Walk West, what we did was build a, a you know, had this foundation of digital accessibility, but we also brought in Walk West's ability to scale and grow as a, as a fast-growing digital agency. Mm -hmm. I think the combination of both of them are now going to allow us to have a broader reach and really show people that accessibility is not just for only for people with disabilities, but it's actually going to improve the lives of all people. Right. And LCI, or Tech, or now Abler, made a big splash this month with some audits of the presidential candidates' websites. Tell me about that. Yeah, so we took a, you know, took a look at the, uh, the websites of the, the presidential candidates, because it's a really important time, right? Mm -hmm. okay. you know, voting is a, is a civil right, and so is accessibility. Mm -hmm. And so we thought it was a right thing to do to go and take a look and make sure that people can get accurate information and it be accessible. And so we took a look at it, and we did find some violations and some issues, but a lot of those issues could be done, like, could be corrected with just a few minor modifications. Yeah. But again, it takes people having that lens of saying, am I making sure that's inclusive of all people? Mm -hmm. And if our political leaders aren't thinking about all people, right. that's something we need to talk about. Absolutely. And companies, no matter what they do, should be thinking about accessibility, shouldn't they? Exactly, right? So accessibility, you know, there's what, 20% of the population that has a disability. So if you're not talking to your client, your customers or your employees or you know, just your, your, your partners, you're missing out on a huge population. Yeah. And 
Yeah, and it's, you know, there's a business case for it, there's a legal case for it, and then there's also just the right thing to do. Right. And let's talk about your cane. It's beautiful. We're used to seeing you so much. white canes. But yours is colorful. That's on purpose. We had a contest to design a wrap for your cane. Let's talk about it. Yeah, so October 15th was White Cane Day. Mm -hmm. And a few months ago, I was talking to Sharon, one of my colleagues, about this idea of I wanted to design my cane. Mm -hmm. I thought of it as just as white canvas. And when I go to networking events, this white cane often became uh, almost a barrier of people. People just didn't want to say the wrong thing in yeah. front of me. And so I was talking to Sharon. I said, hey, Sharon, I want to come up with a way to design the cane. And Sharon said, I got to introduce you to Creative Allies. And so LCI and Walk West, we partnered with Creative Allies and had designers from all over the world submit designs for my white cane. Mm -hmm. And we got dozens of designs. We had people from all over the country also vote. And the winner was one called Fluorescent Shades mm. after my sunglasses. <laughs> so super cool stuff, blue blockers, awesome stuff. Yes, but this is now a conversation piece because what you've experienced is, like you said, people don't want to say the wrong thing, so they say nothing instead of talking to you. Exactly, right? Because it is, it breaks down the barriers, it mm -hmm. opens those dialogues, and I think that when we can have more open conversations, that's how we're going to be more inclusive, that's how we build empathy, and one thing I always talk about is proximity builds empathy. Yeah. And now if we break down this barrier, there's not gonna be any uh, distance between you and I. Yeah, you're really passionate. <laughs> exactly. You're really passionate about accessibility and education. What's new and what's next on that front? You know, accessibility to me was just a beachhead. When Jeffrey gave me that task of creating uh, knowledge-based jobs for people who are blind and low vision, I mean, accessibility was just a starting point. We have to think about education. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was growing up, I was hiding the fact that I couldn't see. I was ashamed and embarrassed. And so I think that was a big piece of why I'm so passionate about this, is that I don't want anyone ever to feel the way that they can't talk about their disability and that education. If we're gonna be looking at the next 84 years, when I look at this, this is great. Yeah. But my hope is that in 84 years, we're gonna have a lot more different types of jobs even though all these are great jobs, the technology is going to be changing and we got to make sure that people are educated to be able to take those jobs. How does Abler conduct accessibility testing? So one of the things that's unique about Abler is that we actually use people with disabilities who are actual users of assistive technology to actually conduct the test. And then we also have people who are able-bodied who are there also to provide other aspects of the testing. Because you can't just have people with disabilities or assistive technology doing the test. You need to have a a, a sample of all different types of mm -hmm. abilities. And then we also use a technology platform. We use it, so we have a combination of human testing plus technology to be able to conduct this test and give you know, the most accurate type of uh, results for companies and businesses. Thank you so much, John. Thanks, Rolanda. The best way to understand how Abler conducts this accessibility testing is to see it for yourself. This is Tom. Tom is your dream customer. He loves to shop, especially online. Dog food, prescriptions, late night donuts. He's always ready to press the buy button. And Tom wants to shop on your website. But there's a problem, a big problem. Tom can't access your website. Why? Tom is blind. He is part of the 26% of people around the world with a disability. That's 1.8 billion people. Yet as high as 70% of U.S. websites, content, and online experiences aren't accessible for people like Tom. Even websites that claim to be accessible aren't always usable by people with disabilities. Say hello to Abler. Abler is built on a foundation of technology and humanity, created with the sole purpose of bringing inclusion and accessibility to everyone, no exception. Abler is not like other companies that only rely on software for accessibility. Abler also employs professionals with disabilities to manually audit, monitor, and test your website. So now, you'll be legally protected with ADA, 508, and WCAG compliance. And with the Abler team, your website is actually accessible and functional for customers like Tom and the 1.8 billion other people with disabilities. Sounds like the right thing to do. Let us improve your business by making it accessible for all. Real people standing by.
Mike Ionelli is the co-founder and chief strategy officer for Abler. Mike, it's great to talk with you. It's nice to talk to you as well, Blanca. So you have a long history in marketing. What is the main message you want to convey to businesses about the importance of accessibility? Well, when we built the brand, we were really focused on in inclusive, right? We wanted everyone to be able to access the site, but also provide people in the industry with much needed education, help generate awareness around disability inclusion and accessibility. Mm -hmm. So one, the one thing that I think about what we're trying to come across is that the world is a very unique place. And that, you know, we were talking to John earlier, about 26% of the global population has a disability. Mm -hmm. So a large percentage of folks out there are unable to access content that we all access every day. Mm -hmm. And so we want to create, you know, remove the barriers, create a level playing field so everyone no exception can view the content that we have and hopefully bring accessibility to the masses. Do you find that accessibility is still something that a lot of people just don't understand? Yeah, very much so. I mean, as we've been going through the launching of the brand and the business, I think we've got the product, we've got the team, we've got the brand, but the industry and the world has to catch up. And what we're learning is when we talk about breaking down barriers, it's when we have these great conversations with either our referral partners or our allied team is folks just don't really understand the impact it really has on folks. Yeah. So tell me about the work you're doing at Abler to make accessibility part of the everyday lexicon. Yeah, well, we're doing a lot of work at Abler. I mean, I think we're, 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 our aim at Abler is to be a lifestyle brand. You know, I mean, every company out there can offer a solution. But what I think what brings us different is that the reality of the industry is that we've got a team of analysts that have disabilities and they live and breathe website content every day. Mm -hmm. And a lot of other, other competition companies like that, they use AI technology to help solve the problem. Excuse me, in reality is those AI platforms only really account for about 35 to 40% of the violations. Mm -hmm. And so we have these platforms and tech platforms as well, but we also have an incredible team of folks that live and breathe it every day. So the combining the humanitarian side and the technology, you really bring together a complete excessive experience. And then also you get a compliance as well. You learn quite a bit about uh, accessibility. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning quite a bit. But I, what I'm learning most is fulfillment, you know, yeah. professional fulfillment and doing right by good. And so super excited about the opportunity that we have working with John, working with Jeffrey and, and being supported by LCI, which is uh, an amazing opportunity for us. And as you were building abler360.com, you learned quite a bit about accessibility, didn't you? Uh, we did. When we were going through the launch of our website, which was very, you know, I come from a background of marketing, analytics, you know, yeah. database driven stuff and website content. Mm -hmm. And so we had our team, it was funny to see how our development team was going back and forth with our accessibility standards. And most people think, hey, I just want to put some alt tags in or make sure I have a site map or make sure a screen reader can read the content, but it's way, way deeper than that. Mm. And so when we think about compliance, we think about one thing, but accessibility is completely different. So completing a site that technically is compliant is great, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's accessible for everyone. And so we spent a significant amount of time over a period of two weeks to make sure our site was not only compliant, but was fully accessible for everyone. Tell me about Abler Allies. So Abler Allies is our new program for partnerships. And so we want to identify opportunities and partnerships with great companies that share a like-minded about passion. So we're looking for really quality advertising agencies and web development companies, like-minded businesses that have great exposure to other brands. But ultimately, it's the sort of the rising tides lifts all ships. We want to spread good cheer, the opportunity. We also want to make sure the world knows about accessibility, not just compliance. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you, Vlad. It was nice meeting you and talking to you. Great to talk with right. you. And thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We are happy to answer your questions. You can reach out to us on social media, as well as at our website, lcindustries.com and abler360.com. Remember, this live presentation has been recorded and it will be uploaded to Facebook shortly after we are done. It'll have closed captioning. It will also be uploaded to YouTube. Have a fantastic afternoon.